This episode of the Structural Engineering Channel is brought to you by PPI, a leader in engineering exam prep for the PE Structural Exam. PPI provides expert prep courses and study resources designed to help you pass the PE Structural Exam the first time. PPI's PE Structural course is fully updated and taught with October 2021 code references and includes new editions of their PE Structural books. PPI's live online courses include hours of lectures, problem-solving demonstrations, exam strategy sessions, office hours, and a passing guarantee. When you take a live online course, PPI guarantees you will pass or you can take the on-demand course for free. PPI has helped engineers achieve their licensing goals since 1975. Check out PPI today at PPI, the number two, pass.com to see all of the resources available for PE structural exam prep. Again, that's PPI, the number two, P-A-S-S dot com. Welcome to this episode of the Structural Engineering Channel, a podcast focused on helping structural engineering professionals stay up to date on technical trends in the field and to help them succeed in their careers and lives. In this episode, we are talking to Derek Lausch, PE, who has worked as a senior project engineer for the past seven years. He decided to go back to business school to get his MBA at UNC Keenan Flagler Business School. And that is what we will be talking to him about in this episode, why he chose to go back to business school, what he hopes to accomplish by doing it, and how his structural engineering background fits into all of that. I'm your co-host, Matt Picardle. And I'm your co-host, Kara Green. Now let's jump into our conversation of the week with Derek. Derek, first, welcome to the show. We are so happy to have you. Matt and I were actually kind of talking about MBAs not too long ago. Uh, Can you please provide our listeners a little bit of a background on your career journey? Yeah. uh, So first off, thanks, Karen and Matt, for having me. Excited to be here and kind of talk more about my story. Um, And hopefully your listeners get uh, a little bit of a better understanding of what the MBA process is all about. Um, so for me, I'm actually from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, uh, where Bethlehem Steel is, was. Um, so maybe that kind of inspired the civil engineer in me. So I went to RPI, Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute in upstate New York, got my bachelor's of civil engineering, uh, went straight down to Georgia Tech for my master's of civil engineering. And then from 2014 to 2021, I worked up in New York City as a structural engineering consultant. Um, so we did mostly high rise buildings and that was really neat to see kind of where the city is going. And at the same time, we also did a lot of renovation projects. So just kind of seeing where the city is coming from and how kind of those construction techniques and materials have evolved over the years, really neat as a structural engineer. Um, and then a couple of high profile projects as well. So really good mix in there. I uh, really enjoyed my time as a, a structural engineer but now I'm actually a first year MBA student in the full-time MBA program at UNC uh, in North Carolina and the Keenan Flagler Business School. That's awesome. Yeah, it's quite a journey, uh, quite an education as well and an experience. Uh, I know some of our professional engineers that are going into that. I know a lot of people have, you know, they, after a couple of years in, they, that's, probably one of their options they think about going to or getting their MBA. Uh, what made you decide to go back to, to business school? Like, was it something that I'm sure you thought for a while um, or was it not like, and um, how did your company play a role in that and in your environment to go to business school? Yeah. So I guess it's funny after Georgia tech, I thought I was done with school, you know, no more tests or homework. Um, so that was like the first year. And then the, I guess the thought kind of started creeping in. You know, even if I did stay in engineering, you know, it might be good to have. Because um, I know a lot of engineers are more technical and you know, number driven. So maybe they don't have the business background. Uh, and that might help, you know, set me apart as I you know, went through my career. Um, you know, that was a nice little thought. Never really explored it anymore. Um, and then COVID hit. So I know, Matt, you did a video about this too. Um, I think that just kind of gave me, you know, some time uh, working from home, really consider where I was in my professional journey, uh, you know, where I wanted to go. And for me, it came down to wanting to pivot more 
I guess, from structural engineering into the real estate development side of our industry. Um, so I guess that kind of started the whole process. Um, I, I would say it was, I definitely did think about it for a while. Uh, definitely not spur of the moment and definitely would not recommend someone to just say, oh, I think business school would be you know, a nice spot. Let's just do it. <laughs> um, but yeah, and the company did not play a role as well. You know, I really loved the firm I was at. Um, you know, had some great colleagues. Actually, were supportive of the decision when I told them. So I think that just kind of you know goes to the quality of how the people there were, and you know, them wanting to see you, uh, succeed. Yeah, that's great. And something that was really interesting that you just said is the the. I guess the, the want to pivot. <laughs> right. So I, I think that's a great point to touch on is that I think after a while of being in your field, and I think some of our younger listeners can understand this because, you know, I've, I've been out of college for give or take seven years. I, I just aged myself really easily, <laughs> but, uh, but um, yeah, I think, you know, when we, it's almost like the seven year itch that they talk about in marriage, you start looking for something. You're like, Hmm, I should, I, maybe we want to do something different and spice things up. And I think a business degree is a really great option, especially since you already had your master's in structural engineering. So I know you mentioned getting into real estate development, which is a, a great, I think after having the experience in the actual technical detailing of structural engineering of working for a firm uh, or a consultant firm, and then moving and getting the business degree to help you launch into the development side. I think that's great. So is there, when you think about that, you know, that's, that's one option. Are there any other things that you would like to accomplish with getting an MBA degree? outside yeah. of just this big, the, the pivot, I guess, is the best way to put it. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, for me, I think coming from structural engineering and pivoting to real estate development, uh, hopefully driving some of those, you know, decisions and boundary conditions that were given to me as a structural engineer, and I'll have more of a hands-on uh, role in kind of shaping those. Um, and I, I'm also kind of passionate about sustainability as well. So I know as you know, a structural engineer, you don't have much control over if your project goes lead lead or not. Um, so I think just having kind of more of an impact there as well um, is something I'm really looking forward to. Um, and, you know, I, I knew some people who kind of went straight from my previous role into more of these business backgrounds within construction and real estate. Um, but for me, I kind of wanted that foundation, I guess, structural engineering, pun intended, um, of the business background and you know, kind of getting all the knowledge about this industry as I could before just leaping right into it. Um, no, and that's great. Um, just for any of our younger listeners or anyone looking for a, looking at a business degree, what you just said was very important because I think it's important to understand is that vocabulary and structural engineering is very different from the vocabulary of people in business. <laughs> yes. And learning the foundation helps you from having such a steep learning curve when you actually get into the business. I didn't mean right. to interrupt, but yeah, I, that was such a great point to make, especially for our listeners who, you know, maybe not necessarily pivoting to a different sort of division of work, uh, but maybe just going into management because when in your when you're in management as well, having some sort of business background, people management skills, those sorts of things are also very important. Right, and you know I've been on a couple site tours so far. We've had that kind of uh, opportunity available, and just talking to some of the developers, you know, I'm kind of curious. Oh, is this a PT structure? Is this just regular reinforced concrete? And I think they they don't even know, you know, the differences that go into all of it. Um, mm -hmm. So I think, you know, that'll kind of just help out a little more as well. Um, kind of, you know, strengthening and being it a It will make developer. you a great translator. <laughs> <laughs> so, I hope so. Um, and, you know, another thing that was important for me was to get a, a really good network and background. Um, so UNC has one of the best, you know, real estate development programs. And I think that was, you know, something I really looked for is uh, 
you know, that network to build before just springboarding into, into the industry. Yeah, that's a great point. I think having that structural engineering background and if your goal is to get into the real estate uh, industry, it, it's related. Uh, I think that's one of the big advantages as structural engineers. You work with everyone in that whole AEC real estate industry. It's all interconnected somehow. It's just that each discipline plays their piece. And I think that really helps because you see more of the picture than someone that just is kind of just fresh in the real estate industry. They don't really see all the intricacies that go into it, especially the engineering consulting side work. But then it looks like you're going higher up so you can kind of see more of the bigger picture and you can make your difference there. And I know from my experience talking with some of like, I don't know, the, some of the owner reps that are really knowledgeable in those types of things. That's I found that really cool. Like you're talking to owners that know what PT slabs are and know the importance of that. It would, uh, it's really refreshing as a, you know, as a engineer knowing that, okay, they know what we're going through. They know the importance of this. So that's definitely one way that you can, I think you can set yourself apart and become valuable right. in that field. Right. Um, right. Kind of to play devil's advocate here. Wh- why get your MBA? Can't you just learn this stuff by, going to some networking events and what do you even like learn in business school just because yeah you know, these are the things that <laughs> pop into my head <laughs> yeah definitely so um you know like i was saying before just kind of building that business acumen and kind of getting used to all this new jargon if you will um i think is just really important and you know you want to know what you're talking about before you get into these meetings and um just start developing um yeah i, I think Again, the networking part is very important um, because I think real estate especially is a very uh, relationship-based field. Um, So who you know can kind of um, get you into different positions. But I I think it was worth it for me just to build that foundation and kind of, I guess, retrain my thought process into uh, the development aspect instead of the engineering aspect. Yeah, I think... uh what makes it worth it are the connections that you make. I think for me, that's why I think kind of the COVID pandemic thing really sucked, especially if you're going to school, because I mean, getting your master's and even in in engineering, that's one of the things that I found most valuable, you know, making that connection with your your classmates that, you know, I'm still connected with uh, uh, years later. Uh, And you can't get that just by taking an online course or reading right. a book. That's right. something that where I think the power of uh, getting together with like-minded individuals, you, you build that network. And, and like you said, I, I'm sure the real estate industry is definitely relationship-based. And uh, because even, you know, if you're trying to get a house, who, who, who do you get for a real estate agent? It's like, oh yeah, it's referrals, you know, for the most yeah. part. Yeah, yeah. That's a yeah, yeah. really good point. Yeah, and back to your point, I guess about you know COVID and going to school now. I think it's it's really interesting for me. So, you know, I did my first two degrees fully in person pre-COVID, and you know built those relationships, which was great. Um, I think one potential benefit just trying to pick some out. Um, you know, with I've, I've had hybrid classes as well. So sometimes we're fully on Zoom. Uh, they're really emphasizing being fully in classroom. Um, but for those hybrid classes we had, um, you know, I think you get to meet different people in your, in your class that you might not have thought to reach out to. So sometimes the professor will just put you in random breakout rooms in Zoom and, you know, you, you can't just pick your friends who you know. Um, so I think that's kind of one benefit there. Um, but yeah, definitely uh, fully Zoom, I think, would have been a struggle for sure. So, and this leads me into a question because you said you actually left structural engineering. So you are a full-time student. Uh, and as someone who is very curious about, you know, I, I was very happy when I graduated from college. I was ready to be done with it. Um, you know, how from going from being in a professional setting to going back to being a full-time student, which business school is in a, in a way, a professional setting. Um, 
let me ask, how did you prepare for going back into class after so many years? Well, it wasn't easy. Um, <laughs> so, exactly you know, I what thought, I expected. <laughs> I thought, you know, I'd done this place before. I'm good to go. You know, I, I know what to expect. I did grad school as well, not just the undergrad experience. Um, so it should be no problem. But that quickly changed, you know, first week on campus. Um, luckily, we had a pre-MBA program uh, that was optional. So it was called ASW, Analytical Skills Workshop. And that was a couple of weeks, you know, before actual classes started, um, sort of a primer of just readjusting back to the classroom. You know, we had uh, a couple of professors teach a class and, you know, no credit, very low stakes environment to kind of readjust. And I think for me, that was important. And then also just gives you the opportunity to meet some of your classmates as well. So, you know, equally important, start building that network. Um, and for me, I was working until, I guess, the week before that started. So I think it was a really good kind of easier way into the, into the program. And They give you like a brief immersion before you go full on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think it was definitely helpful, though. So No, no, I think that's great. That sounds as, you know, it, and. I feel like it's necessary because I, I think with work, it's almost kind of a weird, like the thought of being in a classroom. I don't know if y'all remember, I used to have labs that were three hours and like having to stay focused on a single task for three hours makes my brain hurt. Now, <laughs> the fact that I could do it at 20 and 21, I'm like, oh. You are on a different, like X games level, you know? <laughs> so I think that's great that they offered that to kind of give you like a transition moment before you go back into that. Um, so, but this leads me into another question. Cause I know there are likely some challenges and you kind of hinted at them. I know getting back into the classroom was not the main one, or maybe it was, but it's likely not the only one. So one, this is two parts. One, what were some of the key challenges that you saw and how have you dealt with them in the transition? Yeah, so I guess, again, just readjusting the homeworks and tests, finals, midterms. Um, for us, <laughs> again, I, think I, I mentioned we're on the quarter system as well. So for me, I, I was always on semesters, you know, three or four classes per semester. Um, and that was good. But now we have, I guess, five or six classes in a seven week time span. So that was kind of a big adjustment as well. And I think just learning who you can lean on for help when you need it um, was really important for me. Um, Cause you're also doing this when you're recruiting for internships as well. So mm -hmm. I think that adds just another layer of, you know, uh, complexity into the whole thing. Um, and again, just knowing who you can ask for help and knowing that you do need help and you're not going to make it through this all by yourself, I think is a really um, humbling experience for sure. Um, and then, so again, down here at UNC, they also have uh, the Wood Center for Real Estate. And that's been a really nice bridge between the classroom and uh, professional setting. Um, so they have some really great people in there who are all about the industry, um, you know, always willing to talk and help you out. I think that's been, again, very helpful for me. Um, and, you know, again, for me being an engineer and adjusting back to this, these business classes, I think uh, putting in a little extra effort into class studies uh, has been really beneficial because um, there are some people here who coming from business backgrounds and just kind of springboarding uh, with the MBA into a, a higher position. But I guess I'm a, a part career switcher. So, mm -hmm. so I have is, a, so I do have that, a question against yeah. those people, not against them. That's not the correct term, but you know, <laughs> do you have any challenges? Because when you think of people who already have an existing business degree, you know, they've gone through certain types of classes, which are very network centric, relationship building centric. They're not, they're less technical, even though they do have like accounting and stuff like that to, to work with. Have you seen, you know, do you, it's, uh, and I want to phrase this correctly, you know, do you see any sort of gap 
from having more of like a liberal arts background coming into business from a technical background, I see benefits, but I also could see where there are challenges. Um, Matt and I talk about this very frequently, especially around networking uh, for some of our younger listeners. You know, I didn't know to network until I was already in my professional career, like, you know, the action of going and doing and meeting um, and getting out of your comfort zone. Did you experience any of that while in your studies or in your, in your classroom settings? Um, There were definitely students who, you know, you could tell they came from the business background and just get it. Um, So I think those are the people you try to ask for help when you, when you Mm -hmm. need it. Um, And that's been really, I guess, helpful for me um, because, and the professors are very helpful as well. You know, they have office hours and you can email them any time of the day with a question and they'll always get back to you. Um, so yeah, I, I guess in a sense, you're making up a little bit of that ground. Um, but I think it's very, very interesting to just kind of get all this knowledge and uh, kind of absorb it all like a sponge and uh, hopefully retain all of it by the time we graduate. Um, yep. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was curious about the the environments of of the school or uh, in business school in general. So it's I is this program I, or business schools in general? I think you have to be in the industry or be working as a manager or whatever for a couple of years and then you go. It's not something that you just you get your undergrad and then you go straight to MBA. Is that is that, or is that the case? No, so it's it's interesting. So there are a couple of people here who kind of went straight from undergrad into the MBA program and I think that's a very uh, small percentage of students. Um, I think maybe, you know, COVID kind of played a role in that and them wanting to, um, you know, uh, defer their entry into industry by a couple of years, maybe once things kind of normalize a little bit more. Um, but I think here, the average student has worked uh, about five years in industry. Um, and that's any industry. So there's people who, you know, come from banking, uh, real estate, even, I don't know, waiters and restaurants. So, it's a very diverse uh, back group of students and very, uh, I think, interesting to kind of hear everybody's story and learn from them. Um, and, and not necessarily managers as well. Um, so for me, I, I had a couple, um, you know, direct reports under me, but uh, I, I don't, I wasn't like a project manager or anything. Um, so I don't think that's certainly a, a requirement of coming to the MBA program. Um, I think it's very helpful. You know, I guess if you are staying in the same industry, this will help you propel um, and kind of springboard you up a couple of steps. Um, but if you're a career switcher, uh, for me, I think just kind of getting this whole business background to kind of make your pivot is uh, the ultimate goal. Yeah. And I think that's, uh, which I'm just trying to remember my grad school in, in engineering is, yeah. is, um, that's that very different for me. Yes. Most of the most in, when I went to grad school, most of the engineers were from undergrad. So they didn't have a lot of work experience. And I still learned a lot from them just from the diversity of students that were there and asking for help. I can just imagine with all these people with multiple years of experience in the industry, different industries, and you're asking them for help and probably vice versa as well. I could see why that is you know, that's learning center right there. You're, get, you're getting a lot of information from different perspectives. And I'm sure that's why business schools do that to get people from different backgrounds and experiences. And I mean, I think that's part of it. You're not just learning from the teachers, you're learning from them. And because in their own right, uh, each of them can teach each other. And I'm sure that's where a lot of the value comes from when you get your, when you get your MBA, not just yep. the network, but also the, the relationships and the things that you can learn from them. Yep, um, absolutely. Uh, just to follow yeah, up, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> just, sorry. Uh, so we, we at, at UNC, we have uh, study groups that are assigned to you by the program. Uh, so it's you and maybe four or five other students. And you kind of go through the first two quarters of the program together. 
uh, all the same classes and work through group projects. And like you're saying, I think that was just fairly helpful to see, uh, you know, where they're coming from, where I'm coming from, and how that translates into where we're all going. Um, so yeah, very, very beneficial. And I think here, um, you know, different from Georgia Tech, that was more professor-led classes um, where maybe there's not as much group discussion, but here in business school, it's very group-based and, uh, you know, students kind of leading the discussions as well instead of the professors. Um, so very different experience. Could you go into that a little more? That's, that's kind of curious. Uh, like, what is a, a typical class like? Are you, is it technical? Are you guys going into the numbers? Are you guys going over scenarios? Like, I guess yeah. what's the... A typical business class like i'm just too used to technical <laughs> classes <laughs> I, I give me equations all day matt's like please tell me what these classes are like <laughs> uh yeah it sounds it, it like depends. too much collaboration <laughs> uh so some some classes are more case-based where we'll actually be assigned a case to read before class and then you know maybe you'll be asked to take a stance either way and kind of defend your position um, so maybe it's how a company responded to a certain um, certain event. Um, you know, what would you have done differently? And I think that's a really you know really cool low stakes environment to make these kind of big time decisions. Um, you know, they're not affecting anybody, but you still have the chance to get in there and you know see what the executives at these companies saw and you know how would you react uh, the same or differently. Um, it's very cool. Uh, some that just reminds are... me of like Legally Blonde when she has to debate <laughs> herself, which I know this is not law school, but <laughs> that's what that reminds me of when you yeah. say you have to defend your point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe it's like a step below law school. Uh, step up from engineering. Oh, yeah, uh, kind of reminds nice. me of that. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's great. Um, and something that you touched on, and I think this is also important for, we, we have listeners all across the board. So some that are engineers um, still in school, and then some that have been in the industry for a while. And we've spoken to quite a few people who have gotten their MBA, not necessarily about their MBA though. Uh, and something that you mentioned is, you know, one really good thing about waiting to get your MBA the five years is there if you you gain a lot of business acumen, even if you're not in business, just by being in the industry, which I think is really important. And I think uh, really you can bring a lot of value to your MBA. I have also had, I, I have a lot of friends who are engineers and got their MBA also right after. And one thing, one benefit, and it, it wasn't discussed in this discussion, but may be beneficial for any of our younger listeners who are considering uh, ending, you know, graduating with their engineering degree and going directly into an MBA program is that a lot of times can provide a benefit during the hiring process. And also when you're in the industry, you can understand more of the business quicker than someone who did not. So you you have less of a learning curve when you're actually in your role with a company. So I just wanted to touch on that because I thought that was a uh, a really good point. I've thought about going back and getting my MBA. I just had a good, a, a great friend of mine just got her MBA. And then I have like my friend, uh, another friend who had his master's and is getting his MBA now. So I, <laughs> it's, it's a very hot topic right now, <laughs> yeah, but um, I, I've enjoyed it so far. If that helps. Yeah. At all. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's great. Um, so, you know, to end off here, because we do have just, you know, keep, keep in mind our wide, a wide, wide. I am from the South. That was a very Southern way to say wide. <laughs> um, but to end off here, you know, do you have any like final or last piece of advice for engineers who are considering returning to school, uh, after working as an engineer in the industry, specifically for getting an MBA? Yeah, so I would just say to definitely uh, give the idea some thought and consideration if it is something you're considering. 
um, make you think about you know all the positives you have in your current role, and you know if you think uh, an MBA specifically would help propel you um, ahead, or if you're even looking to switch into a different role or possibly career, um, if that's something you want. You know, it is a big decision, and I think warrants that time and consideration you put into it. Um, and again, so there's a lot of different programs that you can also get into. So I know a lot of schools have uh, online programs or part-time MBA programs um, if you're not able to you know, commit for the full-time program. Um, and I, I would just say apply early. So one thing I didn't know when applying is that there's usually about three or four different application rounds. Um, so the earlier you get in, definitely the better. Um, and if you're concerned about the GMATs, uh, some schools actually have test waivers for the GMAT or GRE. So if you feel you can present a strong case for that, definitely take advantage of that. And I guess the last piece would be to just start to talk to people with, uh, in the programs and definitely take some time off before your actual program starts. Uh, for me, I think a week <laughs> off was not enough. So I think if you are able to uh, just enjoy the time off because the program will ramp up pretty quickly. I think that'll be uh, the best way to go. No, that's great. And, you know, Matt, go ahead. Oh yeah. I was going to say that was a really good advice. Um, like you were saying, you know, think about why you were, you, you think about why you want to get your master's and does that, uh, does getting a, a, an MBA lead or help you out in your your final goal because uh like you know it's not it's not for everyone but it's it depends on your goal like your goal aligned with getting an mba and uh maybe if you're in a small firm and you want to be like the ceo of the small firm do you need your mba like it always depends on what your your uh end goal is and uh, yeah, COVID, you'll, you'll have time to think about that and see what decisions are best. <laughs> so, yeah, thanks, thanks again for that, Derek. Yeah. Of course. Thank you so much, Derek. We really appreciate talking with you today. Yeah, thanks again, Karen, Matt. Really enjoyed talking to you guys as well. I hope you enjoyed the episode today. We'd love to hear your feedback, comments, and or questions. To leave them, please visit structuralengineeringchannel.com. There you will find a summary of the key points discussed in today's episode, which is episode number 72, as well as links to any of the resources, websites, or books mentioned during this episode. Don't forget to subscribe to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcast. Until next time, we wish you the best in all of your structural engineering endeavors.